Hey, Phil from Eurohead here, and if you're thinking about designing or installing an efficient system into your house, be it geothermal, uh, hydronic floor heating, solar power, or whatever it may be, here's how to avoid wasting heaps of money, wasting heaps of time, and just ending up with a massive headache. Now, the problem is something that we've ended up calling the efficiency fallacy. And that's because all the time we see people say, I want a geothermal system. They're, they're so efficient, right? They're really efficient. I want hydronic floor heating. It's the most efficient method of heating there is. I want solar power. You can't get any more efficient than that, right? Free energy from the sun, it's the best. But what actually happens is that people invest in these systems, they have them put into their houses, into their buildings, into the workplaces, offices, whatever, wherever it may be. And they invest a lot of money and a lot of time into this and they're really excited. And as they should be, they're fantastic things. But then after using them for two months, six months, a year, two years, they're like, you know, where, where are the savings that I was expecting? Where's, say, the comfort I was expecting? Where's the energy efficiency? What's going on? I just invested 50,000, 100,000, 250,000, whatever it may be, into this system. And my electricity bills are through the roof. You know, nothing's working as it should. What's the deal? And the problem is that there is a really unscientific approach to these things. Basic physics are often not understood or not even considered when making decisions in these systems. And why that's a problem is, is because when you analyze these systems, whatever they may be, the geothermal, the hydronic, uh, the solar, you can see that it, it's not just that one aspect of the entire system which makes it efficient. That is one part of an overall system, of an overall building. And so if you have one weak link in the chain, the chain is going to break. So for example, you can have a geothermal system, but the geothermal system is only one part. That is where the energy is harvested from. And so that means that it then has to be connected to a heat pump. And then that heat pump sends the energy further on to either aircon, hot water, hydronic floor heating, pool heating, cellar cooling, whatever it may be. And so, yeah, sure, the geothermal part might be installed right. But then if the heat pump is a crap model, not installed right, not designed well, or if the, the, the end part, the floor heating, the aircon, the hot water, the pool, whatever it may be, is not installed right, then the whole system can be rendered ineffective, inefficient, and not worthy. So a simple way to think about it is that the efficiency of an entire system is the product of each part or component of that system. So what I mean by that is, let's say you have hydronic floor heating. You have an air to water heat pump, which is uh, harvesting heat from the air, and it's sending that heat into a floor heating system. Now, the, the heat pump itself, if it's installed correctly, if it's a good model, if everything's done well, let's assume that it has an efficiency of 300%. So that means that for every one kilowatt of energy we put in, we get three kilowatts of heat out. And then that sends the heat to the floor heating system. Now, a good floor heating system, you might say, has an efficiency of, let's say, 80%. So, what that means is you would times the 300% by the 80%, so you now have 80% of the 300, which is uh, 240%. That's your total, that's your overall efficiency of this entire system. But that's assuming that they're all done correctly. Now, if, let's say, the floor heating is uh, installed into a suspended slab, uh, you know, the pipe runs are too long, they're too far away from each other, whatever, there's a myriad of reasons why it might not be working as it should. This can drop the efficiency, so not from 80%, but let's say to 50%. That means if we times the 300% efficiency from the energy source by 50% of the, the heat emission uh, component of the system, we now end up with 150% overall efficiency, instead of, if it was installed correctly, 240% efficiency. So you can see how the, if it, the total efficiency of the system is greatly affected by just one part of the chain being a little bit weaker than the others. And so you can see this as well in houses. And it's a bit harder to calculate, but the principle is still there. People get caught up thinking that one particular product or one thing is going to make their whole house energy efficient. We're going to get double glazed windows. That's going to make our house efficient. Whereas they might have double glazed windows, but there's no shading and there's just sun in the middle of summer shining inside all the time and inside it's hotter than outside. So it's about considering every part of the, the, the system in, as a whole, in total. 
because that determines the overall efficiency and effectiveness of your system. So to avoid making the common uh, efficiency fallacy mistake, what you really need to do is consider how the system is put together. And the system might not just be the HVAC system, but it might be your entire building. You can consider that a whole system. And this doesn't mean that you have to invest in the best of everything. You need the best windows, the best insulation, you know, the works. No, it does not mean this. All it means is that you have to basically sit down, analyze the different aspects, what affects each aspect. And the best way to do this is to actually have a professional engineer design or help you make decisions with say, the energy efficiency of your house. Uh, architects also uh, generally are very good at helping you with this. And also with the HVAC design of your house. Because they, as opposed to just, for example, many installers, sure, they might be great at putting the pipes in, they might be great at uh, you know, installing the solar panels. They, they can do their particular part really well. But often they don't actually understand all the intricacies that go into the entire system. So how the energy might you know, flow from one part of the house to the other where we don't want it, where we're just wasting energy. Or how making one small change can actually reduce the efficiency of a system by 50%. So it's important to have the right information, the right experience, and then from this you can make good decisions on where you should invest your money and how best to, say, design the particular system and install it, or the building itself in entirety so that it is energy efficient, so that it's comfortable, and so that it does what you want it to do. So I'm doing this video today because we see people make these mistakes all the time and then they're stuck with these bad decisions. And it's really unfortunate because they don't want to invest extra money after they've just you know, built their house and they've lived in it for a year or built their office block and you know, the tenants aren't happy. They don't want to actually invest extra money into it because they thought it was all over and all done and they've already put all the, you know, all the best things in. Whereas in reality, it didn't work. So why I'm doing this video is to let you know that you should be considering these factors. And if you did want help, this is what we love doing. We love helping people make sure that their building is going to be energy efficient through our experience, through our engineering, through our, say, software modeling. And then we also love helping install each part of it, be it the HVAC system, you know, it could be a combined or integrated heat recovery, um, hydronic heating, air conditioning, you know, pool heating system, etc. So if you would like some solid, uh, engineering and expert installation advice, give us a call at Euroheat, we'd love to help you too.